Hey, uh, Dylan Moore, how are you? I'm well, mate. I'm well. How are you going? Yeah, really well. Really That's well, good. thanks. Um, fresh off the, the Brownlow last yes. night. Yep. How many votes did you poll? I got nine. A little bit. I, I thought I was going to poll ten. So at the table, we're all going like, how many are we going to get? Mm. I thought I was going to get the ten, but... Did any nine? surprise you or was some more around you? You, bit, you felt you were a bit stiff. I was a little bit stiff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the honesty. It's great. But nah. it, it's on the Brownlow, though. It's like one of those things... You nearly need to have that breakout year if you should poll really well. And then the next yeah. year, you actually poll better. Yeah, yeah. I, Jai Newcomb was saying that. But he was like, first year I started playing footy, I polled 18 votes. So we're like, oh, it doesn't that, work for everyone. But that debunks the rule, doesn't it? Someone like me, yeah. I Hopefully next year I can poll a few more. How was the, the whole spectacle? Was that the first one you've ever been to? Yeah, first one. I've done one over Zoom. Oh. First one I did was on the laptop, just had suit and tie but no pants on just on the zoom and had the acai just there and was that to, in, had to hold in covid it times yeah during covid but i've been able to get it out of out of a couple been in europe and yeah um, but this time i was like i've always promised mum that i'll take her to the brownlow eventually and um this was a this was her opportunity and uh so i took mum so good i'm just looking at um some of the votes now john you can actually polled pretty well 24 i think was a leader for your team which yeah. was like any other year yeah, I know. Like Crips last night, forty five. Like that's, that's that that surely can never be beaten again. Um Dacos, what did he get like thirty? They both broke the record. Yeah, that's absurd. It's uh it is absurd. It was crazy. I, I do feel for two people, yourself being robbed <laughs> from a few. <laughs> Thank you. But how Bont and Pally didn't get yeah, know, um yeah. a few more votes as well. Like um Trelaw's obviously had an incredible year and rightfully so gets I think he finished on twenty six. But Bond had like I think he finished on something crazy. Like, well, did you see what Andrew Dylan's wife said? Yeah, that Red was carpet. that. Yeah, hey, that we're friends of Andrew way. Dylan here. We are <laughs> friends of Andrew Dylan. But that was, um, in fairness to him and and her, what did she say? She basically said, um, "I want Marcus to win, but he's not in the mix." Yeah, and everyone was like, "Oh, okay." And then yeah, she was right. I guess. Yeah, I think that I th- yeah, I'm, I'm hopefully that um, I'm sure that was all. Um, all toward, but no, mate, that's it's fantastic, and, con- and congratulations, sorry on a on an incredible year. Like, I'm um, so keen to unpack um, a lot about you today and your journey, and um, to get to where you've been. It's it's so good, and I, I love um, looking at players like yourself and eerily similar. I'm just I, this is not about me, but just in general, <laughs> there's a lot of people out there like you're 177, which I'm I think I'm 178. 178 so I've got you both. Well. Are you yeah, 178? Yeah, so yeah. They, they've, they're robbing they've you again. Me out again. <laughs> <laughs> and the centimetre is when you're it around matters. our height, it really matters. Mate, it, it, <laughs> so, it matters so much. No, it does. <laughs> We're the short kings. We yeah, do like every centimetre counts. Yeah. So apologies. No. Both 178. Yeah. 511. So there's 510 here. Yeah. Um, 100 games. Is that? Did you hit 100 against Port? Yeah. 100. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. on that too. Um, all Australian year. But pick 67 in the 2017 national draft. I was pick 62. So you've got me there. You've so I've got, got there. yeah. Well, I think you've won where it matters. But um, <laughs> mate, it's a, it's an awesome story and so proud um of you just from afar of what you've been able to achieve um this year and 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 working up to that as well. How's it? What's it sort of been like the last sort of twelve months for yourself personally? Thank you. Yeah, it's it's been different. I guess the rise of Hawthorne has probably changed the most. And yeah. like, um, it's funny now that Hawthorne are going really well. I've had a good year. More people want have something to do with you like walking the streets and i'm walking next to jack ginnivan it's like he's a rock star and people want to get selfies and i probably never actually experienced the actual afl life where people go oh melbourne they love footy whereas this year it's like the first year where i've actually seen it mm. and been a part of it like last night at the brownlow it's everyone's coming up to us because we're playing for hawthorne now like we're the cool side and um it's it's been different but i've really enjoyed it i've i've never had so much fun playing footy this year and uh, it's credit to everyone at Hawthorne and especially the playing group. I think we're all quite tight and we've just enjoyed playing footy together. We enjoy rocking up on a Monday together. And um, yeah, it's meant this year's been really enjoyable for me. So cool. Like this like this year in itself uh, for you guys has been crazy. Obviously the Hockball um, <laughs> stuff is, yeah, we, you know, we'll touch on it all today. But like you think back to the start of the, the season, zero and five, and it wasn't like a tight zero and five either. It was like a pretty... You know, you're getting sort of beat by a fair bit yeah. in, in a few of those games um, too. And then the famous sort of interview of you <laughs> at the airport, I remember yeah. like saying, bring the mouth guards on, on Monday. 
um, it's it's changed so quickly, and I think it's such a cool thing now when you you talk to anyone about footy, like how things can change quickly with momentum, and if you have those good structures around good people like Sam Mitchell and and yourself and um, and Sicily obviously at the helm, but then you've got some older players there, younger players there. Like, do you think? Let me try and put this into a question. Do you think that like you had the right to do what you did this year? Oh, I don't know if we had the right especially after zero and five but to be completely honest in pre-season i was so confident going to the year really like i i keep tabs i keep receipts on people and everyone was saying like hawthorne bottom four again bottom four and i just this pre-season felt different to me i felt like we genuinely could contend for finals mm. and the first four months to be honest it was just like it was a shock to me it was a shock to everyone because we were just like oh we thought we we're better than this we thought we'll pass these games and we're getting done by 10 goals and it felt like we were never a chance in games. And I remember Sam said maybe two years ago in meetings, he was just like, we need to get past these stages where we're not competing in games. And we're going to have that for this year. So that was 2023. Like we're going to have games where we just, we just can't compete. But by 2024, we need to have games where we're competing the whole way. Mm. Three quarter time, we're still in the game. Then we get done. First four games of the year, we get absolutely smoked. And it's just like, is this what the season's going to be again? So... I don't know if we had the right to do it after that, but to be completely honest, in pre-season, I was like, we're contending for finals. Like, I'm so confident in this group. So I'm not surprised we got there, but I'm surprised how we got there. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good answer. I think that's a pretty shit question um, by me because like, no one has a right to sort of do anything, but you do it anyway. But it's just, a, I think there's there, there's gone of this narrative probably of like, you know, you bottom out, you build for a few years, then you yeah. contend. And I think that a lot of people and a lot of clubs still get stuck in that narrative of it takes time, you know, you know, not to compare clubs and people on different journeys, but you look at someone like um, North Melbourne or Gold Coast who maybe, I'm not commenting on this, but maybe their minds have been like, oh, it does take time to do it. But it's like, well, fuck, like, maybe it doesn't. Mm. Maybe you can just skip like 12 spots on the ladder and 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 be flag, win the flag from eighth. Like that, that is a possibility. So I think it's been a good thing for the, um, for the season anyway. Talking um, Hawthorne, you said before about like yourself playing well, um, you weren't saying that, but I was. Your personal form and, and the way you've been playing, the team playing well, um, publicly becoming more um, noticed in like an AFL sort of team. And then like the rise of this um, almost a brat era around like social media. <laughs> brat summer. Yeah, brat summer. <laughs> that's, that's the one. See, I'm out of it. Um, a brat summer, like bringing in like social media, embracing um, public like scrutiny, all those bits and bits. Like how was that? How was that addressed from a club? Was there ever any conversations between team, between footy club, between social, being like, hey, guys, let's embrace this? Because from when I was playing and even in, in media now, like it's so hard to get maybe these older heads, um, you know, like great coaches that want to be more um, relaxed versus embracing it. Like it must have been hard for some of them. Yeah, it was, it was strange. I think we went through a genuine transition throughout the year where – we were winning games and it was like a snowball effect. It just kept growing and the momentum kept growing and we were getting bigger and everyone was rocking up on a Monday like, we've won again, like, this is great. This Let's keep going, let's keep going. And like Sam Mitchell, Jack Gunston, Luke Bruce, all from the three-peat, we're mm -hmm. just like, this isn't how we acted when we were winning games and we were winning games every week. And then, so I feel like the start of it, it was just a bit hesitant, like we didn't know how to act. And then our social media started blowing up and everyone's like, oh, we need to buy in more to social media as well. Like everyone's loving it. Everyone's loving the selfies. Yeah. <laughs> and then I reckon it was around, we've won maybe six in a row and we've won maybe eight of our last 10. And I remember having a conversation with Luke Bruce. I'm like, mate, like, how good's this? And he's like, actually enjoy it. Because when we were winning flags, it's like, sometimes you don't win 10 of your last 12 like mm. you you have losses and we didn't enjoy it as much back then because it was just like we're gonna win our second we're, we're gonna win, win our third and it's like it's not that often in afl that you go on a six game streak and like what we did this year and it's just like so enjoy it and lean into it so after that conversation which was probably yeah 10 games into it it was just like all right let's lean in a bit more and i think that's what we did really well it was just like we didn't have any secrets at the club. It wasn't like, oh, someone's posted on Instagram this. Like, what do we think of that? It was just like, we would address it at the team meeting. Like, oh, Sam would be like, oh, 
CJ, what's the kit you're wearing today? Like mm. everyone's everyone's like a bit like, oh yeah, yeah. But we would address everything at the start of the meeting and be like, all right, guys, you saw this on social media. What do we think of it? And it was just like, yeah, all right, move on. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. So and, so just to like you'd go, say like Hawks did a selfie post game or something like that. Sam would actually be like, what do we think of this? Or would he be? Is that what you mean? Or yeah, more, pretty yeah. much. It would just yeah. be like, oh, how funny was this, guys? Yeah. And be like, yep. All right, 10 done. seconds done and move, move on. on to let's get better at footy. And I think we did that really well and Sam did that so well throughout the years. He addressed every little thing that someone was talking about. He'd be like, all right, lads, what do we think of this? All good, yep, done. Let's move on. And I felt like that helped us because it was just kind of like there was no locker room chat around anything. It was just like yeah. we've sorted it all out, bang, move on to the next, let's play footy. That's cool. So obviously being in the leadership group um, as well, like – are there times though like pre that because there's like there's a change right and i'm harping on this because it's i'm just so fascinated and i love what you guys have been able to do it with it but was there a time where you know when you're transitioning into this part of like footy you know you're humble in in wins and you don't say anything about it and then in losses you're quiet because it's you know you've got to be angry because you lost a game like that's the way sport used to work right yeah, for sure but then coming through like there must have been times where you still bouncing in and out of those two parts like is it hard to be consistent each week with it oh at the start i think it was mm. a little bit because there was so much talk around it mm. but then the more we play it was just like let's just be ourselves and i think that's what we've done so well as a football club is everyone rocks up and it's just like do what you want do what makes you happy and that's what we end up doing on the footy field. It was just like the selfies, I get it. Like people think it's a bit cringe or people be like, oh, look at them. Like they're not humble in victory. And it's just like, we are like, we're just enjoying our football. And it took me back to when I was playing juniors yeah. and I was playing school footy. And it was just like best, best football I've played is at school because you go to school with your best mates all week. Everyone's hyping up the game. It's like, can't wait for the weekend. You play, you win, you rock up Monday, you tell the stories about the game and that's what we tried to create. It was just like, let's make the two hours on the weekend the most enjoyable part because it can be the most stressful part. And I think that is what AFL is. It's all mental on game day because if you're too stressed for that two hours on game day, then to be honest, you're not going to get anywhere. Mm. And we've tried to create the environment where the two hours on the weekend is just enjoyable, it's fun, it's stress-free, it's you're not worrying about what the Monday review is going to look like in the game because I bet you've done the same. It's in a game, you've gone, oh, that's going to show up on Monday. And we've tried to neglect that on game day and just be like, be yourself, enjoy it because we have a good job. Like, we can't complain too much. Yeah, that's fantastic. Oh, I loved it. I think it was one of those points where you, you watch something and you just want to be a part of it. You feel a bit of jealousy. Like, I, I don't get jealous of many... Um, sort of situations anymore but i was like fuck that just looks like a fun place to be which is what you want to create um and, and, and you're right it's what it's all about was there who were some of the real like leaders i suppose in the footy club of, of embracing this stuff because I, it, it takes everyone to do it right and if you have you know if, if sam mitchell's not on board it doesn't work yeah. like there, there must oh, oh he's coming to our, our breakfast next week and I, I i'd love to that, chat to yeah. him about this but <laughs> I, I can fully understand you know where he's been in his journey of like captain and hawthorne with a different way of things and then coming to this like i wonder have you ever spoke to him about like was it hard for him to embrace it or did you say look you know what i've got this bunch of boys who are that fun to be around like this is the way for us to go forward like yeah i've never actually spoken to sam yeah. about and been like how hard was it but i assume it was hard because of where he came from like he'd worked so hard for everything he ever got mm. and from all reports it was like at training he was the one that would black tell you off. white black yeah. or white whereas now it's kind of like he's enjoying it he's joining in drills yeah. and taking the boys on and uh feels like he could still play footy and he's more of like one of the guys now and when he was playing it was just like nah like, we're doing this this and this whereas now he's very lax with the way he goes about it yeah and, but i think the best thing about sam is he knows when to have fun and he knows when to be serious and I know it's pretty cliche where people say like, oh yeah, like people know that, but he genuinely knows, all right, it's time to work. All right, it's time to celebrate. And that's what I've really enjoyed. Probably his transition over the last couple of years is he's adapted so well to the group now where it's just like, we work so hard throughout the week and we love working hard. 
because then we get to celebrate on the weekend mm. and we celebrate during the week as well like we do little things around the club but the way he's been able to adapt this year has been yeah amazing we had uh jake waterman on a few weeks ago or in perth and um sometimes the best chats happen when the podcast finish and waterman uh jake was saying around i can't remember what we we're talking about we we're talking about hawthorne somehow and he was talking about how he just couldn't believe like what was going on this year um with you guys and how quickly you know clubs can turn around and stuff like that and he said that he's so surprised at seeing sam mitchell now because he played with him at west coast yeah, sort of yeah, when he was transitioning from that coaching playing role and similar to what you're saying before around Mitchell just being the ultimate professional of yeah. like, this is what we need to do, let's do it. Versus his shift now of being able to like show range in his like coaching style and even his personality style of like being able to do both. It's super impressive. But he wouldn't have done it without, you know, you guys being able to embrace it as well. So it seems, I think it's a massive message for a lot of other coaches and even business people to be like almost instead of just being a coach, like coach the team you have, not what you want them to be. Yeah, I feel like you've got to keep adapting as well. Yeah. Like if you're stuck with the same philosophy as you were 10 years ago, then life changes pretty quick. And if you're not adapting to the times, then you're probably not going to really get anywhere. And I think that's what Sam's done so well, he's just adapted to the times and he knows what ticks us lads mm -hmm. now. And he knows that, yeah, we're a bit more fun and we're a bit more jovial than what he what, what his group was 10 years ago. And um, he's adapted to that and it's been great. Huge. Um, we'll move on to some about you and I'm very interested in your story in a second but I was just thinking around Sam Mitchell sometimes before um, teams become really successful we forget like obviously Sam's got an incredible team around him and there's other people in the footy club that would be doing massive things too like who's been some of the um, key players for you this year in terms of other coaches that you've worked with closely Adrian Hickmore is our forward line coach yeah. and I don't know how to describe him he's a crazy guy to yeah. be honest like He's he's so fascinating, such a strange dude, but we've loved him. I think our four line group this year is a whole new group. We've got Jack Gibbon came in, Nick Watson draft, Kelsha Deer draft, Marby Ochoa trade, Jack Gunson came back to the club. Like we had five guys. <laughs> and we've got this new forward line coach who's like to be fair, forwards were a little bit weird. Like the all of us are a little bit strange. I don't know. We actually spoke about it. Um a couple couple of days ago when we we're having a few beers and adrian actually came up to me and said you guys are weird like i don't know there's something about forwards where you're a little bit more risk takers and you're willing to bite a bit off and it's weird but i love it mm. and he's been so big for our four line group this year where a bit like sam is he's kind of found out what we what people we are and who we are what our values are what our beliefs are and then he's changed his coach's style to to that and he's adapted to us. I think he's been so big for me this year, giving me belief. And I got glandular fever in pre-season this year. Oh, shit. And I was like, oh, my season's done. Like, it was, uh, when was it? It was like Feb first intra-club game. So I'd done the whole pre-season, thought I was going really well, got glandular fever, and I was done for, I didn't know, indefinitely from then. And I was like, my season's done and... First thing Adrian did is get me in. He's like, all right, mate, this is the perfect time to work on your mind. I'm a massive believer that 90% of the game is played between the ears now and you're going to work on your mind now. I don't care if you don't want to, you're going to do it. And you're going to send me, every day you're going to send me your mindfulness, you're going to send me your little charts, and every day you're going to do it, otherwise you're not playing. And so every day I started doing mindfulness and really worked on my mind and staying present and that really helped me and he was the guy that kind of pushed me to change something in my career because um he was like you need to work on your mind glandular fever it's actually perfect now you can actually do it you've got no excuse to do it now because you can't do any physical activity and he was probably the biggest push for me this year to make me better it's huge i've heard this a lot around um Hickmon around like he's a line coach but he's also almost like your wellness coach as well yeah. at the club like does he like run sessions I'm so intrigued at what he actually set you up with um, as well in that period like what sort of stuff did he have you doing and what does what is that extracurricular sort of stuff that he takes for... he's like a specialist coach yeah. like, he's like Mr. <laughs> Fixer yeah. it's it's funny he, if someone's not playing well they'll be like Hick go for go a walk. chat to him yeah. 
get him in the office and he'll do a whiteboard session with you and you literally speak and if I go ah uh, he'll write ah uh, on the board and be like why would you say ah uh? and, like, and he'll do a full whiteboard session with you if you're not going too well uh, so he does that a lot with players that aren't performing as well as they should and then he runs our mindfulness sessions so we've got a psych and yeah. um, he does all of his psych work but Adrian actually does all of the mindfulness work so every morning we'll get into the shed and he'll run us five minutes of mindfulness and um he's a massive like mentality coach as well mm. he loves working out people's brains and um for me he got me onto an app called muse yeah and what's on it it's just pretty much mindfulness it does a whole yep. range of things but i just do the brain work on it and pretty much like you put this headband on and you do mindfulness for five to 20 minutes and it like comes up with birds. So if you're calm, birds will start chirping. And if you're not calm, then it'll be like rain will come like smashing down on you. Yeah, wow. And it's hard at first because you can't get the birds. But then once you get the birds, it's just like, it's just like. Does it like magic. talk to you or you just have to try and like Doesn't calm talk, yourself no. for birds to come? Yeah, you got to calm yourself for birds and you can hear. It's like instant feedback. So when the birds are coming, it means you're calm. But if the rain's pouring down, it means you're thinking too much that's really cool it, mate it's a big space I, you know, I do my head in talking about this stuff a lot but it's still <laughs> something that I like haven't been able to um, to nail to be honest but I'll, I'll definitely give that a crack with um, your own stuff as well you're talking about like working on on personally on your mindfulness your game and and everything else in between did you am I right in saying you had like prior to this you were focusing on like a lot a lot of more the negative things versus the positive things like you had like a black book where you're writing down <laughs> what's the yeah. what's your story this is pretty interesting yeah i had a little black book of and when was this like circa when like last year when or? sam took over which was 2020 end of 2021 yeah 2022 sam took over the club and everyone started riding us off we had a few trades and all the journalists were like, they're tanking. Mm -hmm. And I was like genuinely offended. I was like, you're, you're saying this football club's tanking. It's like, that's just, that's criticizing everyone at the club from top to bottom. It's just like, you're telling us that we don't want to win games of football. Like I was shocked by the comments, to be honest. I was like, the credibility of our football club is getting tainted right now because people are saying we're trying to tank. And I was like really angry with that. So I started keeping receipts and if there was something on SEN, I would screenshot it, put it in a little file and I'd write it down and I've got a few names written down in a little black book and it kind of drove me to be honest and like motivated me to be better and I would show a couple of the guys like, oh, I see what this person just said then. Like, and they'd be like, yeah, yeah, I saw that as well. Like, That's crazy. I'm like, yeah, no. Like, and it kind of motivated me to begin with and to be honest, like my whole life, I've been motivated by people telling me I can't do things mm. and proving people wrong. Like my draft year, pick 67, like clubs were passing on me before I got picked up. And I was like, I've played with this guy, I'm better than him. And you're picking him and then you're passing on me the next pick. It's like, I was like, all right, I'll, I'll note that down as well. So I created this little black book that people people say and um it pretty much just motivated me motivated me for two years of oh, i'm gonna be better i'm gonna prove these people wrong and then this year jenny screen um she's an ex-olympian she came into the football club she works with the aflw side mm -hmm. but then she took over all of our leadership stuff this year so she runs our leadership program and she got me in her office and was just like you you can't have this black book anymore like you can't keep using negative comments to motivate you because when you're good what are you going to use and then i started playing well this year and she was like what are you going to use to actually motivate you if no one's talking bad about you like the club's going well you're going well it's like no one's no one's talking you down so what you just gonna try and make up stuff now so that kind of like she explained it to me is in i've got the first level of my house and that's built from negative comments and proving people wrong but I've got to build a second level now and that's through positive comments and it's mm. people saying how good's dylan going this year how good's hawthorne going this year hock ball anything it's like start using that as well to be like appreciate and be like thank you like accept that people are going to talk about you in a positive manner 
so that's probably changed my mindset this year where got rid of the little black book and started thinking about things a bit more positively it's a really it's a really good point i'm so happy that you brought that up and you're actually obviously working on it because i was again bringing up jake wardman but speaking to him about something similar and that he's working on it sounds like you've you've already started that but with that mentality of like coming in using negative comments or proving people wrong as a motivation but then you actually hit a form where you're like no i actually am one of the best players in the comp now so your mindset has Simply, to change yeah. like you can't like you've got to be like otherwise yeah what do you do you got to be able to take it to the next level with something else and he said the same sort of thing you know he his whole life you know playing there was about um at west coast was about like proving people wrong you know proving supporters wrong proving people wrong yeah. that he deserved to be in the team now he's made all australia and he's like shit i've got to i've got to change this it's got to come to the next thing now yeah that's why i was so appreciative of jenny this year where i was able to do it mid-year where i was in good patch of form mm. and i'd oh it's weird it's weird i say this but like i would play really well for three weeks and my mindset would be like oh i need something wrong needs to happen like i need to get injured or i need to have a shit game and i'd be telling myself like i need to have a shit game and then i would mm. and then i'd be fine and i'd be like oh weight off my shoulders like all right let's get back into good form again so you'd need the shit game to then motivate you to keep playing pretty well. much yeah and that's that happened at the start of the year and that's when jenny and i really had the conversation where it was just like you can't keep using this as fuel mm -hmm. because you should be playing well every week and like adrian he might say the same thing to me like i spoke to him he had a little whiteboard session with me when i was like man i just need something wrong to happen because i'm going too well like we're going too well and he sat me down and was like no nah, you need to stop this mindset because it's unhealthy so yeah, I was able to change that mid-year and I still get the same feelings. It's just like, oh, like, I, I'm playing too well. Like, mm. what, what's going on? Like, I need a, I need something bad to happen in my life. But yeah, I, that's probably the biggest thing I'm working on at the moment is trying to keep a positive outlook on that where you don't necessarily have to have something wrong happen in certain parts of your life. And I feel like that's what I've had in my whole career so far is just like, I've always had a little hiccup and it's just like, all right, that's all right, I'll, I'll build from that. Whereas now, it's just like, I might not have a hiccup. I might, I might not. So I can't wait for the hiccup to come. Yeah, it, mate, I, I relate to that even just more on a life level. Sometimes when things are going so well, or like I'm like, fuck, you know, something's bound to happen here. Yeah, like, there's no 100%. way I can be this lucky to like keep this up. Like something bad's got to happen. And it's almost like you do manifest then shit actually popping yeah. up. But the one thing I've almost realized in it now is like there's always going to be like really good shit. And there's going to be bad shit. It's just like where you put your energy. That's yeah. what like all I can focus on now. Like it's just putting it into all the good things that are happening and just understanding that the bad shit's going to happen too and not hoping for it. Yeah. I don't, yeah. No, that's good. Yeah, I write that. Um, what else has, has helped you this year? Like, again, we go back to being picked up at that time. Um, there's obviously a, a period as well where I heard you speak about recently, like back in the COVID hubs, like playing in a 13 v 13 for... <laughs> Fremantle? I played for Frio, GWS, Sydney, West Coast. I've played for a few few, so, <laughs> few so teams you, in my career. So you fast forward, <laughs> uh, so you rewind back to that period and we know how short time can be um, in the AFL landscape if you're not sort of performing at the level. Like, where were you at in that period? Like, you've always said even from being drafted, you wanted to prove people wrong. But was there times there where you thought, you know, maybe I'm not going to be able to prove people people wrong like is, is my time coming to an end or did you always think if you just got the opportunity you'd be right i always thought if i eventually got the opportunity i'd be right and <laughs> it was it was actually a funny story it was my 21st in the hub mm -hmm. and we we're in perth and we were in like lockdown quarantine and it was like the best two weeks of our hub because we were in the barossa and there wasn't much going on over there we we're training on like a little local footy over with potholes uh but this one time we we're in perth my 21st and i wasn't playing in the side and i was playing good 13 v 13 football but everyone was playing good 13 v 13 football like it's not hard when there's 13 players on the ground <laughs> yeah and um it was it was easy to play well but i was playing well and i was like oh, i should i deserve an opportunity like there's people getting opportunities that i feel like i should be ahead of and it was my 21st and I remember I went around to every line coach and I said, mate, just try me at halfback. Like, I promise I'll, 
I'll make it there. And then I went to the midfield coach. I was like, mate, get me on ball. Like, I reckon I can do some damage. And then I went to the four line coach and I was like, mate, just give me an opportunity. Like, I'll be right. And I always thought I just needed the opportunity. And luckily I got it and then I took it. But it wasn't until I started actually believing it that I just need an opportunity. And once I get this opportunity, I'll take it. And yeah, luckily enough, that hub year last game of the year I, I took my opportunity and um i was able to stay on the list but there was points where i was just like i'm done like my dream's over i'm gonna have to look for a new club or i'm gonna have to play vfl football or something like i always thought i'd be able to make it at afl but there was points where i was like i might not make it at hawthorne mm. and especially during 2020 I, I that was a genuine possibility i'd be i'd seen a lot of players um, in this position which is why you know i think your story is so fascinating and I, I want people to understand how how um how incredible it is what you've what you've done like not surprising but also like it is hard to do because what you're talking about before about um playing you know really well at the the second tier level and there's a difference sometimes when you play like really well at that level then you come into a team and you're not playing the same role as what you were or you're yeah. behind four other midfielders that you can't sort of get in front of and this happens a lot like there's a lot of those um these you know really good midfielders that struggle to then get the opportunity to play well when you're in the senior team but you've actually done that like you've correlated the two differences so it's almost like i'm so curious at how that had happened because there's so many guys i'd play with that were gun players like some of the best second tier vfl players i've seen but as soon as they'd come in they one a wouldn't get the opportunity because they're behind other players and two they maybe just kept thinking like maybe i'm really good at the second level but i can't make it at the first yeah, I think I've gotten that mindset as well. Where just, it's just I'm, like, I'm just going to be a good VFL player. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like, I'll always just be a good VFL player. And I make it to the AFL and just a genuine, not even a role player, yeah. it's just like struggling to get a game. Yeah. Or you'd go, sorry to jump in again, just want to nah. nail this is, you'd be like, I'm a good VFL player, I'll come in this week and I'll block for X. Or I'll do, like, I just need to play a role to keep my spot, not to dominate. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like people get trapped in that mindset as well, where it's just like, you come into the AFL side and it's just like your role changes. So you're just like, oh, I'm, I'm not the main figure, so I'm not going to be able to dominate today. And I think my first two games where I played in 2020, I got into that exact mindset where the first game, remember we versus St. Kilda in, in the Gold Coast and I had like five touches, kicked one goal. I was playing as a deep forward and in 13v13, I was running everywhere. It's just like, you've, you've got to run everywhere. Like I was playing ruck. Yeah. <laughs> I remember kicking a goal Maybe for Hawthorne. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm 178. I, can. <laughs> I um, I was kicked a goal for Hawthorne, and the runner comes out and gives me a GRS Guernsey and says, "Go play back pocket for GRS." So it was in the 13 v 13. I was playing everywhere and I was running up the ground and doing kind of what I do now, where I got free reign to kind of do what I want. I'd go to AFL level and just be like, "All right, 60 percent game time." two interchanges a quarter go sit full forward ish like um it wasn't until the th I, then the second game i tagged caleb daniel at half time and never tagged him a lot <laughs> he gets the two brown low votes i was like well this is going well and then last game of the year against gold coast uh i pretty much just caught told just run as hard as you can and so i played a bit more high half forward and gold coast just gave me every outlet in the book I'll just run up the ground and then run out. I would get a mark. And that's when I started to go, oh, even though Gold Coast, they were horrible that day, to be fair. Like, sorry to Gold Coast, <laughs> but they were horrible that day. But then it actually gave me confidence. Like, if I play up the ground a bit more, maybe I can make it and not just be a role player, but be a good player for this side. And I think that was the first time where I got to actually play the role that I was playing in scratch matches. And it gave me the confidence. We were just like, yeah right okay i can i can maybe make it do you take pride in the position you play in on the ground at the moment like i i think you know you're smiling already but <laughs> I, I think it's honestly probably the second worst position like hardest position second worst but what are you, what's the hardest i'd say ruck is yeah, the worst position I agree. On the ground. yeah 100%. ruck is the worst oh, position but i'd ruck. say your position is the hardest position to play like a high half forward pressing up into um into stoppages trying to get outlets as you said has to rip back into the ground like the running and unrewarded running of that role um you've sort of been able to debunk that theory with the possession that you're actually accumulating because a lot of the players that play that role are getting in the low sort of like 10s to yeah. 11s 
But like, how have you found that? How have you found playing that role, making it your own? And obviously, all Australian year, like you're, you're playing it better than sort of anyone at the moment. Yeah, I kind of got into the mindset where everyone was saying that. They'd be like, oh, yeah. you've got the graveyard shift again the today. The graveyard shift, yeah. And I'm like, I want to try and change that. And Can you explain that to the viewers that maybe don't understand like why it's called the graveyard shift? Or Yeah, like, so high half forward role, it's a lot of sacrificial leading where you run what we call help side. So the ball's on one side of the oval, We'll run help side, the other side of the oval, and you just run up and down that wing pretty so much. So you're sort of connecting with that offside you, winger, like following him. At every him. center bounce, I'll go hand up to Massimo, be like, connecting with you today, yeah. mate. So you're letting him go run all the way back, run and then the you take back. his man and follow. Pretty much. Yeah. He'll run back, help create a plus one in the defense. I'll run up, try get his man, yep. and then... Rip back. Rip back to goal, and my defender's already 15 meters ahead of me. But... I don't know, at Hawthorne, we're pretty lucky where we get to change that role a bit because Jack Inven came this year and he said, oh, I played that all year last year, got 10 touches a game, and all I did was run help side, help the winger out, help the defense out. So we actually change it quite a lot now where I'll go up in a stoppage, mm. Guinea will go play the sacrificial role, Connor McDonald will then play a little bit deeper, and then we kind of change that a bit throughout the game. So it's not that I'm stuck out on help side all day, but... I don't know, when I got into the role and everyone's like, oh, mate, like, today might not be a day. That's when I got into the mentality where it's just like, no, I'm going to prove you wrong. Like, yeah. it doesn't have to be the graveyard shift. Like, I'll have 20 in a goal a game mm. through this role. And I think that mentality helped me with playing high half four because I wanted to prove people that it's just like, it's actually nearly the best role in the game. And now I'm able to go into stoppages, rip back, and I get to change a little bit more. But it was probably just because I was able to play my role for the side for a period of time. Like, I would play help side all day and I'd be happy with it because I know the coaches valued that. Mm. It wasn't until I proved to the coaches that I was reliable and trustworthy in that role where they're like, all right, let's get him into a centre bounce. All right, let's get into a few more forward 50 stoppages. And I think that's so crucial in AFL. It's you got to get trust of your teammates and your coaches. Because once you've got a bit of trust, they'll give you a bit of leeway, and that's what I've been able to do now. Yeah, no, it's 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 fascinating. It's really cool insight as well. Like I know a lot of people in footy would know that, but I still think it's something that um, when watching the game or people watching from a um, observing it from afar, like it's such a important role for for all teams. And to, to see the way that and the way you explained it then around how you're getting so tricky with it with moving certain players through up into the stoppages moving around I think it's obviously been super confusing for other teams like how have you found going from trying to stay in the team to then getting players sitting on you in that position as well Have is that been another kettle of fish to even work through in terms of like having people sort of going closely to you yeah it makes, it makes it a bit tougher because mm. playing half forward a lot of the ball comes through uncontested marks or um, uncontested possession so then when you get someone sitting on you and I'm trying to help out the winger by getting his man and then I've got someone sitting on me so there's a 2v1 it's just like I'm doing my role for the side mm. but then yeah it does become graveyard where it's just like I can't get a touch here so this year we've actually been able to change it up a bit where um, probably can't give too much away no, but <laughs> I, um, I've been able to change my starting positions a bit where hopefully we can challenge the defenders but I think this year, one time I was getting sat on and they were just like, go to the square, like, see how that goes for you. So um, it's tough when you're playing forward and someone sits on you, but Adrian Hickmont's really like, every forward should have a defender sitting on him. Like, he's like, you get tagged this week. You get tagged every week because you should have a defender on you at all times. So um, he's been able to kind of challenge my thinking where it's just like, oh, man, I'm getting sat on today. I can't get near He's like, every week mate like work through it like eventually break them so we've got a good forward line group now where everyone's got the mindset where we're going to break them eventually and we're all very hard workers so we're like fourth quarter we'll get them eventually so i've been able to get lucky a little bit where Connor mcdonald will run my man around for a bit if i go off and then i come back on and he's a bit gassed so i've been able to yeah run him off as well it's awesome he's played such a cool role in the, the sort of late half of the year when people start to realize how good um Connor is one question just around this I'm really curious because obviously the grand final um, coming up this will come out after the grand final but you look at the opposite of someone playing on you and I'm fascinated with how Zorko is going to go this weekend <laughs> against the Swans and like how they'll play that with 
like I've watched those the two Brisbane finals and like the amount of respect he pays his opponent is like crazy how he just he will not give a shit as a defender if his forward kicks goals he just keeps running off as have you played against guys like that? Like, is it hard to sort of be like, what do I do in these situations when you're playing, when they're so attacking? A couple of times this year, I've purposely gone to someone like that yeah. to make him accountable. Yeah. And so we did it with Harry Sheasel last year where Harry's an incredible player and he's so damaging off the half back. But we were like, I went to him and just went, all right, on defense, stay a little bit closer to him, but then on offense, like, let's use you. And he threw him. It worked. Like it's worked a couple of times, especially this year, where I've purposely gone to someone like Azorko, where he's their playmaker, but it's going to be me versus you, and let's see who has more damage in the game. I love that about the game now, isn't it? Like it's going to yeah. be so. I feel this weekend, like you're putting someone like a Papley on Zorko yeah. and just being like, all right, let's just see what happens. Like if you want to let Papley inside fifty by himself, vice versa, you want to let Zorko run off half back and link up chains because I think even in the Geelong game. First half Zorko was cooked, but then he got him back into it in yeah. the second. It's like it's it's crazy it's, how it can work. It's fascinating. I was watching Zorko as well because I was at the game and obviously just watch where yeah. I play and who would I be playing on. And I was like, oh, I'd love to be playing on Zorko today because yeah. it just it literally just be he was like, just running off. It'd be me versus you, and let's see who you can have thirty, but if I kick five, then I probably win. That's awesome. So I love I love when I get to play that role because one don't get to get on a lockdown but then it's just like it's a bit of fun it's like i'm gonna see how much damage i can do and let's see how much damage you can do and <laughs> shake hands at the start of the game and say i'll see you after yeah it's it's really i'm looking forward to to seeing what happens this weekend with a lot of matchups who's guys that you really respect like that you've modeled some of your game on or you just go like i'd love to bring elements of that into my game could be positional could just be anything about it like who's who's some players that you really admire i admired chris judd growing up yeah I went, to pretty Corf- good. I went to Corfu Grammar yeah, it and it was all player. because of Chris <laughs> Judd. Really? I wanted to go to the same school as Chris Judd. Um, and so I reckon growing up, I was a massive Hawks fan. Yeah. So I loved like Luke Hodge, Buddy Franklin, Surioli. Sam wasn't one of my favorites. I let him know about it as slow. well. But a bit slow for you. Yeah, a bit slow. So I used to like love watching Chris Judd and like his explosiveness and how damaging he was. But then when I started getting into the, the league... I was very lucky, to be honest. Luke yeah. Bruce was at the club, one of the best small forwards of I think timing-wise, he'd have to be the best timed crummer I've ever seen. Yeah, it's it's amazing. And Sirioli was at the club. He's pretty good. He goes all right. Paul Poplo was at the club. So I was like blessed with small forwards where I was a midfielder growing up, but I got put into Hawthorne and it was just like, you've got three absolute star small forwards of the past 15 years go learn off them mm. so i was i was very lucky where i got to learn a lot off them and so i've kind of modeled my game probably a little bit on bruce and poplo a bit more i'm not as talented as cyril uh but then recently it's been papley and toby green yep. they're probably the two where they stand up in big moments when the team needs them they're the ones that go all right lads like come with me and i love how damaging those two are inside 50 i think that's one thing that i have struggled with in my career so far and i've only probably been good at it this year is getting more damaging yeah in hitting inside the 50 hitting the yeah. scoreboard more goal assists score involvements where i look at toby and paps and i'm like every game it's just like every time they touch it it seems like a score is about to happen mm-hmm. so I've really looked at those two closely over the past two years to try and take a few things from their games. It's great. I love love your honesty in that. I think it's a, we're in an awesome position in, in footy at the moment where I feel like five years ago, players would never say they admire like something about someone else, but you can really learn from a lot of these guys. Like I, I love watching, obviously, Toby, but Papley at the moment, I went and watched the um, Sydney Giants game up there. Yeah, I was, I was obviously going for the Giants, but I remember Papley had just like a set-shot goal in front of... Um, it was like 40 metres out directly in front. It wasn't even a great goal. Like any, like yeah. a lot of people could kick it. But I was like, fuck me. Yeah. If this bloke kicks this, the crowd's going to go fucking mental and they'll win the game. And like, it was a sh- like as I'm saying, it was not a great goal, but he just went nuts. Yeah. The whole team fired up. And I was saying on Footing Friends the other day, I'm like, he literally, his goals are worth nearly double. Yeah. They just fire everyone up so much. The way he sort of carries on, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's so good to see. But Watson's a bit the same. And Ginnivan. Yeah, like the way those boys are sort of tracking down. Like, there. like when we when we played, you actually 
wait for us to kick goals just to see the celebrations or do i yeah i love it mate I, yeah so I, you're, like, you're a fan i'm a fan yeah. oh I absolutely like what you guys have done this year as a team around like the selfies and everything like i'm not i'm a massive fan of i love evolution i love just like yeah you know uh, the, the motto of the show is you be yourself everyone else is taken like it is yeah. it's fantastic and i think it's something that i probably if i was 18 like i would have earned for being in a like an environment like that where you just embrace what people want to do so when watson's given the you know the <laughs> ice in the veins and he's so doing the tweets to Brody grundy like <laughs> i was i loved it but even on on contrary to that um when ken did the thing to guinea I loved it too. I was yeah. like, you know, yes, it's a little bit disrespectful. I like, let Bruce get off the ground, but it was fucking weird, but I loved it. I was yeah. like, this is great. It's good for the game. Yeah, it is good for the like, game. Like, I'm telling you, next year, you when you guys play against each other, you can't tell me that, like, triple the amount of people will be watching that. Yeah, it's going to be good. Like, <laughs> and not, it wouldn't have happened if that didn't, like... Yeah, no, so actually, I was speaking to Did Zach... Did you write that in the was, black book? <laughs> I don't have it anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. <laughs> I, I was speaking to Zach Butters last night, and we were like, we're so keen to play each other. Yeah. Just because of everything. It's just what's going to be going on. Like, people are going to be watching. People are going to be like, can't wait for this. Like, um, And I was speaking to him last night, and we was like, I hope it's early in the season, because it's going to be a good game. Mm. Zach Butters is one that, um, just getting on yeah, top I of love, here. Yeah, I love him. I love that guy. The, the final... Um, at the end of the year of, of that game against you two, I, I think was it, it's probably up there in the top three games I've watched. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, it was. Yeah, I, I obviously don't appreciate it as much as yeah, <laughs> as you yeah. would. But like, Sicily, it was a good game of football. It was, yeah, mate. It could have gone either way. Like, oh, and sis, I if there was one man that I wanted to have I that, know. I know. <sighs> yeah, it was hectic. What could be? Yeah, hectic game, but mate, there's a there's big things coming next year, which I'm sure. I actually thought like going out the way you did is almost like the best way, just to like you know, besides winning it, obviously, to just be really hungry for next year and just come back and be fighting and fit and ready to go. Yeah, I yeah. What it's, was said after funny. that game? It's funny. Oh, what was said? Oh, Sam, I remember Sam caught us straight into the the meeting room, and he pretty much just said, "I'm." gutted for you guys like mm. i'm so proud of you i feel so sorry for you like we came so close and because i generally thought we could have gone all the way this year and he was just like it was like a disappointed dad mm. but then he was so proud of us as well and yeah, we all pretty much got in a massive like huddle and just like had a hug together mm. and it's like it's tough right now, but we're going to appreciate this someday and don't forget the feeling you feel right now because we don't want to have that feeling again. But um, he was proud and it was it was, it was was cool to see him like that where it was just like, I genuinely feel sorry for you guys and you've put in so much work this year to get where you guys are and to know that he thought we could actually win it was actually really big for us as well because you're always kind of searching for something with your senior coach like oh does he think i'm good enough and when he said to us like, i genuinely thought you guys could win this year like you guys are good at football it meant a lot to us and i think that's what's going to motivate us next year as well it's just like we're good we just need to perform now in big stages so right what you say like so you can have all the belief in the world in yourself but when like someone else believes in you it almost means more sometimes like just that I don't know, just that like recognition that yeah, you're like, yeah. oh, okay, I'm onto something here. Like, I feel like, is... especially with your coach, you're always searching. You're make him proud, their, like, yeah, you're yeah. just like, does he think I'm good? Like, I know I'm going all right, but does he actually think it? Mm. So to, for him to like tell us that was was really cool. Um, being a senior player now, and obviously with the leadership group and everything like that, do you are you interested in the holistic side of the club around um, players coming in? new things that you want to do um, game plan wise all those bits and pieces are you like privy to those conversations or do you have input on those bits and pieces like obviously um, you don't have to comment on but it looks pretty certain that obviously Tom Barras massive get that would be yeah. coming to Hawks next year like is there anything else that you'd love to see sort of happen uh, hopefully Josh Battle joins us as well Josh That'd be Battle great. he'd be pretty good too um, yeah I, I wouldn't say I'm a part of a lot of the conversations around what we're going to do game wise mm. or like player agent or i obviously went up to sydney to see harry perriman and sam and mark mckenzie are very big jared jared ruff is at the club now and he's yep. doing all of our um, free agents and 
they're very big on getting a player involved, just a bit of familiarity with the person and um, kind of get to know on a player's perspective what happens at the club. So I guess I'm kind of in those conversations where I was just like, all right, come up to Sydney, like let's meet Harry Perriman. That's see awesome. How that goes. So cool, and yeah, like, it is yeah. cool. Like, how, what, so had you met Harry before that? Because he's very... He's a funny man. Yeah, he's a I, country um, boy. <laughs> Wouldn't, I, don't, I don't know what the conversation would have well, been like. I'm a city like, slicker and he's yeah. a country lad, so um, it was pretty funny. But we've got a couple mutuals. Yeah, you know like the Lamberts, you know, like Billy Lambert, Bailey Lambert, Kane Lambert's Lambert. kids, Craig it? Lambert, Craig Lambert's kids. Sorry, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. I'm good mates with them, and they know Harry. There you go. So, so Craig that's Lambert, why yeah, I went up there. Got you. Um, so yeah, I, I'd met Harry a couple times where it was just like, yeah. All right, we'll get you up there just so he'll feel a bit more comfortable. And yeah, he's a good lad. That's awesome. Does that is that looking like it could happen still, or is it more Port Adelaide now? I'm no, not sure. I'm not sure. I'm mm. not sure. Exciting. I think you are sure. You're I'm sure. actually not. <laughs> <laughs> I love, mate. The off season stuff is so exciting for me. I've been sort of saying it for years around Hawthorne. Like when you got rid of a few big players, like it just sort of set you up for bringing a few more big ones in, like the Gitterman pick up last year i think a lot of people are going is it the right call obviously um looking at it now it's been a, a pretty pretty cool um 12 months for for hawks and and himself so i'm excited to see and jared ruffett obviously knows what he's doing he's he's pretty switched on dude very very respected in the industry in this space yeah i think he's helped out a lot just he's so easy to chat to like i reckon he could do a six-hour podcast yeah and no one would ever get bored because he's got so many good stories such a good person just to chat to so i think he's going to be massive for us going forward as well and even this year it's hopefully we get brass battle as a free agent as well it's just like i think whatever he's doing yeah it seems to be working no it is um another big one that you know i'm really bullish on one of my favorite people in in football mitch lewis obviously with his knee this year um terrible timing felt felt incredibly sorry for him but he would have been so good to have out there especially in like it's really what you needed yeah i love i love Mitter so much um i just wax with him every game it's just like where's Mitter? i'll kick to him because i've got so much trust in him yeah, because you kick him the ball and he'll he's got concrete hands too so obviously they'd be dropping <laughs> they'd be dropping to you a lot which is good yeah, he, actually, he, yeah. he doesn't it's clunk great them a lot. he doesn't clunk him at no, all he just puts them like, yeah i just know just exactly off. where front and center yeah with Mitter. <laughs> Straight just, <in. laughs> haven't seen him taking a test and mark in years <laughs> you're not going to like that he's, he's not going to enjoy that no. hey mate I'm um, talking about your field who are you what are you into I heard you were big into the, the cryptocurrency at some <laughs> stage is that <laughs> you're a bit of yeah, a crypto I was guy. wondering if this would come up yeah um, yeah I, I, I've dabbled in a bit of crypto yeah. NFTs into your Ethereum were you or? Ethereum Solana yeah Dogecoin <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot out there that I've been in um I have, I've done a bit of crypto stuff. I used to be massive NFT guy. Yep. Oh, two, three years ago, probably during COVID when when it was booming, when it was booming and no one knew how to spend their money, so mm. everyone started buying random art online, mm -hmm. and I was one of those suckers that was was buying them, and um, I got a lot of the football club involved with that, and they've actually got like a saying at the club now where. If I if no one can find me, they don't know where I am. And they'll just be like, "Oh, where's Maury? Oh, he's off somewhere talking shit about NFTs." Yeah, <laughs> there was a good there was a good two months period at the club where all I was talking about was NFTs because I felt like I was making a killing. I was making everyone a killing, and then so what it did all you fell down? What did you um, buy into? You you had one of the punks or the apes? What are they called? No, did you have one of those? I nearly had an ape, so. Me and Will Day initially like started getting involved with it and this is when it was pretty dodgy. Yeah. So we went to transfer two thousand dollars because so this ape was worth two thousand dollars. And we got a call and it was just like, Hey, is this Will Day? Like, yeah, like, can you give us your passcode to verify the transaction? And we were like, Oh nah, like this is this is fake, like this is uh, someone trying to hack us. So we went, nah, nah, like hung up on them next day we get an email and it's just like oh you didn't verify your transaction try to send two thousand dollars to buy the ape by that time the ape was worth 20 grand the next day the ape was worth 100 grand and we just missed out and we were like shattered so we were like so fixated on finding the next thing yeah. so then i found nba top shot 
That's what it was called. Yeah. And I started getting on Twitter and I was finding a few Australians that were involved with NBA Top Shot as well. And I started chatting to a guy and he said, just buy LeBron James cards. Like, there's no downside. And I was like, all right, yeah, all right, I'll buy LeBron James cards. So I bought two LeBron James cards for $300 each. And when I say cards, they're this digital online thing. Like, they're not even cards. I don't know how I got into this. And I'd start waking up at 2 a.m. buying packs. So, like, they would go online at 2 a.m. And it was, I remember it was Christmas. It was Deck the Halls pack. And I <laughs> woke up at 2 a.m., bought, bought this pack for $300, packed a Luca. Bang, it was worth five grand. So I had this Luca card, these two LeBron cards, these LeBron cards I bought for 300 each were now worth 20 grand each. And I, I was balling. I was telling everyone at the club, like, everyone get involved in Top Shot. I had the physios involved. Like, oh, my God. I had, like... You started a cult. I had 20 people at the club buying these fake digital online cards. <laughs> and blokes were buying for 50 bucks, and the next day they'd be worth two grand. And so it was actually was like, working for you? Yeah, it was working. And so. I... I put three grand to this and there was this one day at the club where my account so I put three grand in it was worth around 30 grand at this stage it went from 30 grand to 100k in the space of two hours and I'm telling everyone like I'm going lads like I'm, I'm hit the lottery like I can't believe what's going on I sat up all night just refreshing my account so there's like a website that would have your balance and 100k 120 Two minutes later, 150. And my my account went up to 300 grand USD, right? What? <laughs> from three grand. It went from 300,000 300, USD. So what would that does? Can you find out what 300 grand USD is? It's about like 450K, right? And I, I don't know how I got into this mindset, but I was like, it's going to a million. Like, And it, I had a few guys, Finn McGuinness was big on it as well. Yeah. And he was like... Mate, you gotta sell. You gotta sell. I was like, mate, it's 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 gonna keep going. It's gonna. Keep... And forty eight hours later, it was back down to twenty grand. And right there, <laughs> like, I I was gifting I was gifting people just cards for free. I was like, who's your favorite player? Trey Young. Here's a hundred dollar card. I was like, I don't care. You I want to yeah. get people involved. I would I would message my friends. And I'd be like, lads, let's see how quick I can sell a card. And I'd sell a card that I bought for a dollar. I used to buy these dwell and bead cards for a dollar. I'd sell it for a hundred bucks. And I'd be like, huh, sold it in two seconds. And I, I thought I was king of the world. <laughs> and then 48 hours later, bang, down to 20K. I cashed out at 25 grand. So I made a little bit, but yeah, it was. So you, the most chat was 300 laugh, USD. Now. Yeah. 300. I've got like, I've got screenshots of just like this three hour period where it just, I was up all night just like, wow. This is amazing. Just swiping, yep, another, another um, 100K. Obviously, this is not financial advice um, <laughs> yeah. to anyone out there, but do you think maybe your career wasn't sort of taking off because of um, that or was it because of your addiction to sort of like being online swiping um, cryptocurrency? Yeah, I, it's, I actually haven't thought about that. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe the reason why I wasn't getting games is because I was up you all You weren't night. sleeping. <laughs> um, yeah, I... It probably contributed to yeah. me not getting a game, but there was a, there was another period where we bought as a club. I got everyone to buy these Turin Air Thugs, and yeah. it was actually one Are of these the, at more like these are more NFTs. Yeah, I could talk about NFTs for hours. I love it. Yeah, and I told everyone it was like a team bonding session. Everyone mm -hmm. came to my house, and we all <laughs> bought these Thugs. And as a football club, we had a million dollars between us. You'd made Between a million dollars. 20, 20 of us, we all put in, I think, like two grand each, and we had a million dollars between us. And we we're all like. So, like the whole football club or just the team? The team. We had 20 guys yep. that all got involved. So two grand each. each. So it's 44 guys. It was like 20 of us. So I think. 20. So that's only like 40, 40 grand. grand. Yeah. And, and it to got million. to a million. Yeah. And. We used to be in this Discord and we'd be hyping everyone up like, Hawthorne Football Club is here. We're about to get a private jet to Vegas because we've got a million dollars. <laughs> and we're all, we're all like, yeah, how good's the off-season going to be? We're going to sell these thugs. We've got a million dollars. Like, how good's this, lads? And then same thing happened. And then that's when everyone actually like, go on, come on, come on, Maury. Like, mate, you've been through this once. We've had the exact same thing happen and 
you haven't cashed out again. Like, what are you doing? So after that, I've gone away from NFT. <laughs> I can't live with myself. That's, that's unbelievable. Yeah, it's it's actually crazy. Yeah, it's a, look, it's one of those things. I know people don't like, um, uh, you know, the investing in in things they don't know about, and I'd never give that advice. But I feel like at that period of time, it was such a, um, it was such a. A hypey thing. I remember guys at the Giants yeah. doing the same thing. Those punks and the apes yeah. and all those bits and pieces. I never, like, I, I had a little bit. I never had any money, but I was trying to um, get into it. I actually still got this NFT now. I'm trying to actually just get into the account to see where it's at. But it's, I was really into my golf, and I bought this like online golf membership. It's called Links Dow. Did you ever hear of that? Ah. Guys, an online golf well, membership. I buy it. Though. Yeah, no, I wouldn't. It hasn't gone up in about <laughs> four years. So it was a basically you buy into a golf um club that's online um obviously and it buys it'll with the money it'll actually end up buying golf courses around the world yeah. that then you'll be a member in so it's a pretty cool but like it it's still it's still going like i've still yeah. got it there um i don't know if it's gonna sort of eventually Have they do bought anything. any clubs or anything well they've partnered with like um there, there's a big so again without um defaming anyone there's a big there's a I think there's a murmur around like one of the guys that's involved with it is Greg Norman's son. Right. So like this link of it being with Live Golf uh, is right. a possibility. Yeah. And then it's got partners on the website now. Like it's got Callaway, Top Golf. Um, oh, right. It's got Five Iron, Golf Digest. Like it's worked with all these. So it actually could become something. But again, I'm not. I'm not trying to sell it to everyone. Yeah. Definitely don't do that, guys. I, I won't be able to buy it. Otherwise, it'll go down. So. Yeah, literally. Um, crazy so you're not doing any of that anymore I'm, I'm sort of happy that you're not doing that 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 was that'd be concerning if you're yeah. still sort of i'm still a little bit into crypto yeah I, well, i've got like i've still got just, crypto yeah. but i'm not waking up at 2 a.m buying random packs online anymore one of um my really good uh, mates is really into his um crypto stuff as well and he's just like don't if you're going to get into it it's just one of those things like it's a long-term investment yeah. just slowly look at it don't don't refresh it every night stay up it's like it's it's the same as doing anything else again with getting the right financial advice don't just listen to us it's one of those <laughs> things you just do overnight and slowly put into it yeah yeah i'm long-term investments now and playing it safe i'm definitely not giving out any financial advice anymore what's your um what's your interest outside of footy anyway like what do you want to do have you ever given any thought you're only still young but do you have any passions outside of the game that you want to look yeah. into yeah I don't know. When I first started, I'd study commerce and finance. Mm -hmm. I've got a double, I'm studying a double degree. And when I first got to the club, I was like, I'm going to become like a financial guy, I'm accountant or something. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, the longer I stay in football and stay in sport, the more I want to stay in sport. And I don't know, I love the feel of a sporting club and mm -hmm. everyone's kind of like in it together. Everyone's supporting the team together and, the more time I'm spending in football, I feel like I want to stay something to do with sport. Mm. And whether that be like coaching or um, some like eventually like a GM role, I think, yeah, I, I'm really enjoying just being in a sporting organization. And um, I love the people I work with and the connections that I have with staff and players. And I feel like that's something that will be very hard for me to let go of when I eventually retire. And I think, yeah, I'd I'd love to stay in football, um, whether that be yeah coaching or GM role or something like that. Eventually, I think. Do you tap yeah. into those networks at the footy club at the moment? Like I know, as we say, you got so long to to go in your, in your career. But one thing I've always said fascinated me was like guys who want to get into coaching or GM or list management. And it's like you've literally got that at your club, and they don't go and suck the um, expertise out of these guys. A weird saying um, <laughs> <laughs> they don't when am i looking for it you know what i'm trying yeah, to say yeah no, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, yeah no uh, i think we actually do it really well yeah where we get to spend time in different departments yeah. and like who's uh, a who's a jam at hawthorne rob at mccartney rob mccartney and you've got andy gowers as a president, andy gowers, our president. Doing good things yeah very good um, things very good man andy yeah Cabrella. he um yeah he, he's a great man and mm. Yeah, we've got we've got good people in the staff that always help us out. To be fair, and we do a lot of like functions together or barbecues together, and you get to talk to a lot of people. So um, I haven't done a lot of work experience yet. It's something that 
I actually spoke about my exit interview with our PDM. It was just like something next year that mm. I want to do. But the advice I've actually got from the club is, and a few people from the staff is just like, don't go to a football club, look at other others, and then you've always got us here. And if you want us, you can spend a day upstairs, like it's fine. But actually broaden your horizons a little bit first because then you can always come back to us. Yeah. Um, so that's something that I'll probably start next year. Yeah, geez. Well, the, the network that you'd have, it. the Hawks as well would be pretty pretty cool. So I know there's a lot there. Um, mate, what's plans for the off-season? You're getting away? Yeah, I'm heading to the States in in a few weeks. Where are you going? One of my good mates, Jackson Ross. Yes. He's a punter. He used to play at Hawks. He used to play at the Hawks, yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. He's a punter at Tennessee. And they're undefeated at the moment. Wow. So a few of us are heading over to see him for a couple of weeks, go to a couple of games. Huge. Um, yeah, amazing. Is he a chance to be picked up? He, right now, not really. Yeah. He needs to change his kicking. Like, I don't know, he says that he just rolls out and dro- kicks drop punts. Whereas if you need to make it to the league, you need to you've got to hit spirals. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that he's going to do eventually. He wants to make the league. But yeah. right now, he's like a specialist kicker where um, he'll just hit a spot on the ground. And he's more of that type of kicker at the moment. Yeah. But I hope he makes it to the league. It's pretty sick, a bit man. of fun pretty cool what like a lot of australians are doing i feel like it goes under the radar a lot like even guys that haven't played at the top level they just go over there and get a college degree and become punters like it's dominate over there yeah. yeah they do really well as well yeah well we're talking about it's like americans growing up all they do is throw yeah so no one wants to be the kicker yeah and it's like even baseball it's like they'll always throw football throw basketball everything's with their hands so it's like makes sense that Australians go over there and mm. dominate. Will you catch any other sport over there or try and get into any clubs and like a lot of those you know, guys do the tours and stuff like that? Is that on the cards or you just want to go and just chill out? Yeah, we've got a few things lined up. Uh, there's like eight of us. We're going to do a little training camp in Dallas mm-hmm. and we've got a good connection at Dallas Mavericks. So Sick. So the, boy, a, like the, the Hawks guys will go over and train? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got a few of us going over. Um, and it's Spurs Mavericks opening night. We're going to go to that game. Awesome. Uh, and then there's a few. There's San Francisco. We've got a good contact with Golden State Warriors. We went there last year. Um, yeah, we'll go watch Steph Curry again. Um, it's so good over there. Just sport galore. So yeah. all of us like sport fanatics. It's um, unreal. Uh, we're actually going over on the 15th of oh, October. Right. Um, not for a training camp, but we might see over there. Well, we'll be. Where are we going, Dust? We're we going to Sacramento. And San yep. Fran, which San Sacramento Fran, is, I think, right. like an hour out of San Fran. Yeah. So maybe we'll go see Steph Curry. Yeah. We're actually there for um Super Bowl rematch. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I was looking at tickets and they're about 400 US. You'll have wow. some good contacts so for that deal. No, I, I that. don't know anyone in, in the States, but that would be, yeah. that'd be. Where's the game? In San Fran. Oh, so it's going to be there at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, we've got to, yep. let's just buy some crypto and... Like make a million. And no, I've got a, I've got a 49ers cards. contact. You can hit me up. We, we we'll might see. need some contacts. We, I definitely want to do that. We're actually going to see. Um, I hope this isn't a surprise that I know about. We're going to see Royal Otis over there. Nice. Did you know that? Yeah, no, I knew. Okay. <laughs> the Australian band. The Australian band. We're seeing them in. Yeah, it's a bit weird, but um, we're doing that. And then I'm going to go over to LA. And do you know? Are you into like vlogs? Do you know? Um, uh, you know, like Nelk. Yeah, yeah. So Jesse, MTV Jesse, has yeah, started right. this other thing called Sunday, Bloody Sunday, and he's got this like business. It's it's really quite actually similar to, to ours, obviously on a bigger scale, but they do like um, a production business. They make like podcasts and stuff, but they also yeah, do their right. own brand. He's based in LA, so I really want to go over and I've got an in with them. I want to go and oh, meet that's them. Cool, that's... This other guy, um, Cole Young, who started the brand Metalwood. Have you seen Metalwood? Mm. Um, it's a golf brand, but it's a, like a fashion brand yeah, right. in LA. So I'm going to go do that. And then hopefully catch up with um, Nick Stone again, who I've had on the podcast before. He's a former Hawthorne player. Is he player. Blue Stone Lane? Yeah, Blue yeah, Stone yeah. Lane. So he's gone over there and um, dominated with like, you know, coffee. And yeah. they're like going up against Starbucks and stuff in the oh, US, right. which is hectic. So yeah, it'd be a pretty cool trip, man. I'm excited. I want to play as much golf as possible too. Um, hopefully I have time for that, but it'd be pretty fun. You're a big golfer, aren't you? I love it. Yeah, Mido always says that. Oh, I'm so bad though, man. You're better than him though, aren't you? Yeah, I'm better than him. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch Lewis is. Um, he, he got down to before his knee nearly off scratch. Yeah, I think he did get a scratch. We went out in Bamboogle during the. Do you play? Bye. Yeah, not well. What are you off? Nah, oh, I'm off 17, but still better than me. <laughs> no, <play> like, every oh, <laughs> week. <laughs> uh, we went down to Bamboogle. I came last. Like yeah. I was shooting 25 a day. Sicily's uh, quite good. Yeah, he's good. 
he's quite good. Um, no, I get out with with those boys a little bit, which is which is good fun. Mitch is um, obviously starts so good watching him play, man. Yeah, he's, so pure. He's really, so nice. Really good at golf. Mate, I've taken up so much of your time. I um, genuinely appreciate. Just want to say massive congratulations on this year. Really excited to see um, one how the Hawks go and and how you guys go next year. But just personally yourself, love what you're doing. Love. Um, what you've been able to achieve and obviously just the story of it never being um, quite simple and linear you've absolutely nailed it so I'm really proud um, proud of you from afar um, I appreciate not that. that I don't know if that means anything no, to you but it does, uh, it, it does. It, I think just what you've been able to do is really really cool mate so I'm I'm wrapped for you and um, can't wait to, to see what you get up to next year and the years after no, thanks for having me really appreciate Good it good stuff mate